talk of chess, it's Europe, you know, and Russia and East Europe really that dominates this sport. Why is that? And why is all the, uh, you know, we, we know about the Cold War and the time when you got into the game, it was at its height in the 80s. Uh, we also know in the mid-80s mid and we also know that um, there's all this intrigue and all of this. Why is chess such a European sport and why is it that East Europeans and Russians have dominated this sport? No, I, I think at some point it had deep roots there. Mm. Um, and uh, but the reason it was so systematic was they actually put a lot of effort into it. Mm. And uh, I think you can say that people are inclined to one sport or the other. Mm. Uh, but at some point, uh, if a nation decides something is important, then things happen. Mm. It was kind of what I was trying to put across. Mm. But um, I don't think it's per se just a Russian sport or an Eastern European mm. sport. Mm. We find that as other countries get interested, mm. then it does tend to spread. I mean, it's one of the things we're trying to do in India. We're trying to make it really a grassroots thing. And children are getting in. That's something you're very proud of, isn't it? The fact that there is this big boom, if I can use that word, in the interest and the spurt in people playing chess in India. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, in the last 15, 20 years, mm. there's been, well, two elements, let's say. One is the spontaneous mm. interest in chess, which is being created. Mm. And you can see just lots and lots of kids coming into the game. Mm. But second, we wanted to make it a bit more uh, focused and, uh, mm. and that's why we st started this NIT Mind Champions Academy mm. about eight years ago. Mm. It's nice if it starts spontaneously, mm. but there are some critical things. Mm. First of all, you need someone from whom you can learn the game. Mm. If that person isn't around in your vicinity, chances are you won't come into contact. Mm. There are states where you, you possibly don't have this opportunity to play with someone. Mm. So by trying to get it in through the school system, mm. uh, we're trying to overcome those obstacles. Mm. Because I think that's those are the obstacles to it becoming a grassroots movement. Mm. And um, yeah, that is very nice because this year we're going to hit two specific milestones. Mm. The first is we're going to cross a million students mm. who have played in the uh, program. Mm. And the second is we're going to try to break the world record in uh, simultaneous chess in December, on December 24th in Ahmedabad. These are a few questions I've got from people who actually play chess. I've mm -hmm. already made the disclosure that uh -huh. I don't. Uh, so quick, quick, you know, I'll run through them quickly. Um, is there any opening that you prefer when playing tournaments? Why? Generally, I open at the King Pawn. Hmm. Um, and the reason is simply I did it before. Huh. And the reason before was I did it even <laughs> before that. It's just something I gravitated to when I was young mm. and I stuck with it. Though nowadays I, I'm trying to broaden it uh, both ways. Mm. With black, I'm pretty much opportunistic. I, I move around a lot and play whatever is, uh, attracts me at that point. Okay. Do you prefer this both for the rapid and the regular versions or variations of chess play? Um, in rapid, I experiment a lot more mm. than I experiment in uh, the regular version. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, I mean, if you study a, a line and you can play it in rapid, chances are you might be able to use it in uh, the regular version as well. So it's difficult to overlap, but it's easier to experiment in rapid because things go faster. Till you won your first uh, championship, world championship in 2000, it, you had a few years of struggle. Mm -hmm. How did you, you know, what was it that really helped you um, crack that or overcome those years? Well, I think the two earlier misses um, mm -hmm. did put me I mean both times I came close mm. in different ways mm. and uh, then you understand that first of all you have to want something really badly but that you can't let go of your concentration even one minute mm. Mm. I mean in 98 I still wouldn't blame myself the conditions were really unfair mm. but nonetheless having overcome every obstacle on that last day all I needed to do was hang in a little bit longer mm. uh, but my nerves gave way first I mean again because of the circumstances I didn't feel too bad about it but in Delhi, I was very conscious of that. And even so, sometimes you need a little bit of luck. I mean, you, you try very hard. Mm. Um, but even in Delhi, I needed a little bit of luck. On my birthday, you know, I was playing Halifman mm. and I came very close to losing. Mm. But for the rest, I played that tournament perfectly. Mm. Uh, I didn't need a single tie break in the whole event except that one game. Mm. So even when you're playing at that level, uh, sometimes things just need to fall in place. Okay, uh, given the kind of mental prowess you need to be a world champion in chess, if you were not a chess player, what kind of job do you think you'd do? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm interested in lots of things. I, I'm interested in astronomy, for instance, and mm. science and math and sort of in general, something along those lines. Mm. Um, there are a lot of chess players who made it in finance. Uh, <laughs> of course. So maybe that's something. But nowadays, an investment banker. Nowadays, it's not exactly a badge of honor you wear. 
true. Maybe maybe just players caused a lot of the recent problems. I don't know, but uh, that might have been another area I might have done. What's the dumbest thing you've ever done off the board? Um, I think you should ask my wife that probably. <laughs> Okay, okay, all right. You're saying passing on that I'm one. I'm passing that one on. Okay, you've chosen to stay or uh, spend uh, a lot of your time in Spain. Why did you pick Spain? What was special? Well, I met a, a couple there mm. uh, and I became sort of very close friends, mm. elderly couple. Mm. Um, and he, Maurice used to play chess uh, and Nieves also. I would say they almost became like second parents to me. Mm. So, in fact, I moved to the town where they live in, which is a mm. town of 4,000 people somewhere in the hills near Madrid. Mm. And... Uh, even Spaniards are amazed. How on earth did you find this town? We don't mm. find it on a map kind of thing. Mm. It's a very small, beautiful town. And uh, at one point, it was very nice for me to have a base in Europe, mm. simply for the traveling and to work with people and so on. Though nowadays, I would say we practically moved back to Chennai. But it's important for you to have that kind of um, uh, secluded space to go away to from time to time. Definitely. When you're training and so on, it's very useful. Mm. Uh, but also, I think in the early 90s, when I moved there, um, I needed to work with strong players and most of them were based in Europe mm -hmm. and on top of that the uh, travel time was an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so then it, w it was a big uh, step for me but also uh, I think uh, Spain is, um, is a country I've sort of grown to like a lot, mm -hmm. almost like a second home. So we home, know who so. you're rooting for in the, in the World Cup, isn't it? Yeah, though they've not got exactly gotten <laughs> off to the best start. But, yeah. Okay. I've read that you find emails from uh, people who play chess very reassuring. And you've said, and I quote, it is a very special feeling to be aware that your moves mean more than just mere results to many people. But for many people, including me, Anand, it's, your re it's the results that we understand because we really don't understand what gets you there. Um, do you think that's changing in India? The understanding and the interest, not from players, but from people in your sport, in your art, in your science? It's definitely getting better. I mean, there are more and more uh, people who play chess. Mm. But also this time I found that a lot of people who, simply for curiosity as to what was happening, mm. they sort of started following it online, mm. maybe just picked up the rules. Mm. Um, I'm happy in a sense of if I've uh, given someone pleasure through the results. Mm. So, you know, this thing of root, uh, enjoying a sporting event through me, mm. that's fine. But if they also enjoy the moves, so much mm. the better. Uh, and, you know, ideally they would enjoy it at both levels. Mm. Uh, not only just the sporting aspect of it, but also the chess and the underlying logic because I, I think some of the games were really fascinating. Do you see it become an Olympic sport? Um, it definitely mm. could become so, mm. but I think the main thing is simply to make it a mass sport. Mm. Uh, I mean, once you do that, everything else will follow. Mm. Uh, so I think you really have to build it up from the grassroots. Vishwanathan Anand, with you leading from the front, I think we, chess is in good hands. We wish you all the very best and thank you for your time. Thanks so much. Thank you.